Welcome everyone to the Math Rebbe. I'm your host, Sunil. For our season finale, we're going to be discussing how Tosos knew calculus before it existed. The Mishnah Alos says that a square is a quarter bigger than a circle. Is this area or perimeter? Turns out it's both. The circumference of the circle is three times the diameter, while the perimeter of the square is four times the diameter. The area of the circle is three times the radius squared, while the area of the square is four times the radius squared. Tosas proved this as follows. I'd like to start by giving the entire proof, and then I'll focus on each step individually. We start with a circle with an orange circumference and a red radius. We would treat the circle as a bunch of concentric circles. Stretching these out and ordering them from largest to smallest yields a triangle. The distance from the largest string to the smallest string is still the radius, and the largest string is still the circumference. Cutting the triangle in half and putting the hypotenuses, hypotenuses, hypotenai, together yields a rectangle with half of the circumference of the circle times the radius. Since the circumference is six times the radius, the rectangle's dimensions are three times the radius times the radius. Note that a square of the same dimensions as the original circle would be equal to the rectangle plus another quarter, as a square is 2 times 2, or 4, while the rectangle is only 3 times 1. Q E D. Last thing first. Last things first. The rectangle we said was half the circumference times the radius. I'd like to show you algebraically this works as well. Since the radius is half of the diameter, we can substitute just one d over 2 for an r, leaving us with pi times d over 2 times r. Since pi times the diameter is the circumference, we're left with the circumference times the radius over 2. Note also that there's a direct relationship between the circumference and the radius, c equals 2 pi r. That's why when we stretched out the circle, we didn't need to worry about coming up with a shape with curved sides. That can only happen when you have one variable raised to a power other than 0 or 1. Shout out to my uncle for pointing this out when I discussed this toast with him. Finally is the part where calculus gets involved. The definition of an integral is as follows. To get the sum of the area under a curve, we might make a bunch of rectangles along the curve, and then add up the areas of those rectangles. But there's too much of the rectangles that are outside the curve. So we might make them a bit thinner, and thinner, and thinner, until we've got infinitesimally thin rectangles. Labeling their widths as delta x, if we add up the area of these rectangles as delta x approaches zero, we will get a more accurate calculation of the area under the curve. This is an integral. The area under the curve f of x from point m on the curve to point n as defined by summing up infinitesimal widths times the height, which is the curve itself. This is exactly what Tosfus are describing with their description of the area of a circle as a bunch of concentric circles. Taking a circle as a polar function, r equals a, we can integrate the circumference of the circle in o times the widths of these circumferences as, as labeled delta r, the change in the radius, and from r equals 0 to the circumference over 6, which is the total length of the radius. And this will give us the integral from 0 to c over 6 of 2 pi r dr, which evaluates to pi r squared. And that's it for this season. I hope you enjoyed, and please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you did. Over the course of the year, I'll occasionally be posting videos that um, tangentially relate to the videos of this season. And next summer, I'll be back with an all-new season with even more math stuff.